Hello everyone, welcome back to Dakin Cuts. Today we'll be taking a look at problem 4 from the IMO 2024, which is the only geometry problem in the entire two days of test. So without further ado, let us take a look at this problem. So here is the problem statement. We let ABC be a triangle with AB less than AC less than BC. So AB less than AC less than BC. So let the in center and the in circle of triangle ABC be I and omega respectively. So here's the in center and then this is the in circle. Let X be a point on the line BC different from C such that the line through X parallel to AC is tangent to omega. So here's the point X and this line here is parallel to AC and at the same time tangent to the in circle. So this is the point X and the line. Similarly, let y be the point on line BC different from B such that the line through B is parallel to AB is tangent to omega. So this is the line here, the, the point y, and this line is parallel to AB and tangent to the in circle. Let AI intersect the circumcircle of triangle ABC again at P not equal to A. So here's AI, and I extend it until it intersects the circumcircle again. So this is the point P. And then we let K and L be midpoints of AC and AB respectively. So here's the midpoint of AC, I call it K. Here's the uh, midpoint of AB, I call it L. And we are supposed to prove that angle KIL plus YPX equals 180 degrees. So here is KIL and here is YPX. Okay, so I think the diagram is not too complicated, but feel free to pause uh, the video and look through the diagram and the problem statement again if you need some time. Okay, so given that this is a problem for, there are actually many possible ways of solving the problem. I'll just go through one of the solutions and I'll talk about the solutions first before I talk about how you might motivate uh, coming up with this solution. So. What I will do is I will extend the line through X and let it meet AP at the point Q. Okay, and then now I do some angle chasing. So uh, this is the angle bisector. So this angle equals to this angle. Let's call them alpha. So by the parallel uh, lines over here, X, uh, X, X prime and AC are parallel. So this angle is also equal to this angle. And by the concyclic property of AC, P, B, uh, this angle alpha is also this angle alpha. So now we have these two angles are equal, which tells us that X, Q, P, B are concyclic. Okay, we don't need that immediately, we can put that aside for now, but that should convince you that the point Q actually is more useful than you might think at first. Now for the next step, I'm going to call the tangents to the circle T1 and T2 respectively. And what we notice is that x prime t1 and x prime t2, they are uh, tangent lines, so these are equal in length. But also because I have an isosceles triangle here, so x prime a and x prime q are equal in length. So by subtracting the difference, I get t1a and t2q are both equal in length. And what this tells me is that ai, which is uh, given by uh, this over cosine this, is ai and IQ, which is also the same length uh, over cosine alpha. So these two lengths are actually equal, AI equals IQ. Alternatively, you can recognize that AT1I and QT2I are therefore congruent triangles. So again, AI equals IQ. So right now, this is coming up very nicely because we know that uh, I is the midpoint of AQ. And this gives us two very useful insights. The first is that if you were to extend the line through y and meet the point AP at uh, a point Q prime, you will realize that by the same argument, Q prime is double, AQ prime will be double the length of AI. So this means Q prime and Q are the same point, which means that the line through y also meets AP at the same point Q. Okay, so now you see why this is very good. And the second insight is that L is the midpoint of AB, I is the midpoint of AQ, so BP is going to be parallel to LI, 
and same thing QC is going to be parallel to IK. And this is very nice because it allows you to transfer this very ugly looking angle downwards to now look at BQC. So remember this is the angle we are interested in over here. We are going to transfer it down to BQC and we are basically done already because let's take a look at BQC plus YPX. You can break up YPX into two parts. So this part here, uh, QPX, by the congruence, uh, the, sorry, the concyclic of these four points, this angle QPX is equals to this angle XBQ. And same thing, QPY is the same as QCY. So what we are interested in is the angle BQC plus QBX plus QCY equals 180 degrees. And of course, it's 180 degrees because they are angles of a triangle. Yeah, so that is all to problem four. Now, how would you have motivated this solution? Actually, this solution is quite easy to motivate because you might suspect from drawing the diagram, if you were to draw the full line through X and the full line through Y, you might have thought that, hey, they do look like they are going to be concurrent at the same point with AP. And if you say, okay, let's see whether that hypothesis is true, you first put in the point before you prove it, you might realize that, hmm, what if this point, because you are dealing with midpoints here, what if I is also the midpoint, then you will get this is parallel to this, and then you will get this very nice uh, transform transfer of the angle downwards. And what you can realize also is that this very awkward looking angle breaks up into two parts, which very easily transfer over to the the respective small angles here and you get a triangle. So from here you realize that if your wishful thinking that the point Q indeed is where everything meets and is uh, double the length of AI, then everything will work out very nicely and you have a pretty solid proof. So then that motivates you to try and prove that indeed the three lines are concurrent at the point Q. And of course the most easy to motivate approach for me is that if I want to use the fact that uh, I is the midpoint of AQ, I myself prove that Q is going to be twice as far out from A as I. So that's where I motivated myself to draw this line, first meet at Q, and then try and prove that AI equals IQ. So that is where uh, everything came together. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, solution of problem 4. It's a neat little geometry problem to start off day 2. So stay tuned to the channel for more IMO2024 videos, especially problem 5 which is going to come up next. See you soon.